There's a charming musical argument on the internet centering on the note of A4 above middle C. One side of this argument believes the note of A should be tuned to 432 hertz, the harmonic value. The other side believes A should remain at 440 hertz, the current standard. This A440 camp dismisses any argument promoting A432 as bogus. According to them, both the unit of the second and the hertz frequency are arbitrary units of measurement, and because of this, there's nothing any more special or preferable about A at 432 hertz than A at 440. But in the harmonic series, there is something special about the note of A, and there's a reason why the harmonic series tunes it to 432. Before even looking at the issue of whether or not the second as a unit of time is arbitrary, I want to explore why A432 is the most important note of the harmonic series. As I've said in earlier videos and in my book, The Next Octave, there's one major discrepancy between A at 432 and the standard A at 440 that's rarely, if ever, acknowledged. In the harmonic series, A432 is a note and A440 is a mean, a microtone between notes. This is due to the fact that A432 is generated before harmonic 32 and A440 is generated after harmonic 32. So why do notes end after the 32nd harmonic? It's all about the power of 3 and the number 9, the apex value of the Mobius circuit. If we look at the structure of the harmonic series, we see that it contains three parts. Part 1, between harmonics 1 and 15, houses the structural beams of the scale to come. Part 2 is the full chromatic scale between harmonics 16 and 32. And part 3 is the rest of the series that continues to infinitely subdivide from harmonic 33 onward. All 12 notes of the traditional chromatic scale are generated by the scale's end at harmonic 32. And the note of A has a special position in the generation of this scale that culminates a process of tripling the first five harmonics. Whenever a harmonic is tripled, it generates its own perfect fifth. When the first four single-digit harmonics are tripled, they populate every seventh harmonic through harmonic 21. And by harmonic 21, every note in the scale has been generated, except for A. When we triple the last single-digit harmonic of 9, we get A at 27, way down here, necessitating the phantom notes to fill the space around it. And it's this last tripling of 9 that's our focus here, because this is where A is generated at 27, a value that scales up through its octaves to 432. Realize that A27 is the same as A54, A108, A216, and A432, because they're all octaves of harmonic A. This is the final act of note generation in the series. The next odd-numbered harmonic, 11, is not a single-digit harmonic. And when it's tripled, it lands on 33, in part 3 of the series, where the note intervals begin to infinitely subdivide. Any new harmonics after this point will be generated in between existing notes. The A note holds a special place in the harmonic series as the last note generated in the scale. It's also a note that's been offset from all other chromatic notes, and this position tells me that it's a note that deserves our attention. 
Perhaps this is why there's so much contention, argument, and passion with regard to this note. So what do we know about A432? Well, we know that its value reduces to 9, as do all of its octave values. That means that A432 expresses the power of 3. In contrast, the octaves of A440 reduce to the matter-based, unascendant cycle of 124875, expressing the power of 2. Now, I should clarify that matter-based, unascendant frequencies are not bad things. Harmonic C is a power of 2, matter-based frequency. But the point here is that our music requires both power of 2 and power of 3 frequencies. And the harmonic series designates this last note of A to be expressing the power of 3, the tripled value of harmonic 9. And I suspect that for this note, we should not be substituting a power of 2 value like A at 440. Again, that's because A is a special note with regard to the power of 3. The number 9, as we saw in the Mobius circuit, is the apex of the system of energy that regulates the power of 2. It cleaves the locked oscillation between the octaves of 3 and 6, and in the harmonic series, the note of A occupies the harmonic position in which 9 is itself tripled. It's this special nature of A at harmonic 27, expressing a magnification of the power of 3 that's being targeted by the mistuning of the 440 standard. This systemic attack on A432 is accomplished in many cases by disinformation. Here's one website dismissing any value inherent in the 432 frequency by claiming that even Pythagorean tuning, the stacking of fifths, produces an A at 426.66 Hz. This is blatantly false, and the fact that Pythagorean tuning does generate A432 off the tonic of C256 is pretty basic music theory. We can do the math right here to see that's true. Remember, perfect fifths are triples of the tonic note, which is the same process we witnessed in the harmonic series. But even if we corrected all such false claims out there, the main argument against A432 would continue to be that our measurements for both time and hertz frequency are arbitrary. Here's an example of that sort of claim. Personally, I'm fine with simply comparing 432 and 440 within the same context of time-based frequency, whatever that context happens to be. It's simply our reality. It's what we've got to work with. But a few things can be said regarding whether the second and the hertz are, in fact, arbitrary. The International Committee for Weights and Measures defined the second as the duration of 9,192,631,770 periods of the radiation corresponding to the transition between the two hyperfine levels of the ground state of the cesium-133 atom. Hard to measure, but fairly straightforward. And I like that number. It reduces to 9. Wikipedia explains the duration of a second as 1 86,400th of a day. This is also an interesting number because, yes, it reduces to 9, but it also echoes of harmonic A, as 1 octave above 432 is 864. However, 86,400 is not the note of A. If we divide it in half until it reaches an odd number, we see that it enters the series at harmonic 675. Not a note, as it's well past harmonic 32. Having it down, until it shows up in the 16 to 32 scale, we see that it's 21.09375, a microtone just above the note of F. 
but still interesting, as all these octaves of harmonic 675, including this decimal, reduce to the number 9. So is the second really arbitrary? The word arbitrary can mean a few different things. In math, it means of an unspecified value. It can also mean based on a random choice. But I don't think the second can be defined as arbitrary according to either of those definitions, and neither can the hertz frequency of cycles per second. The choice wasn't random, and the unit holds a very specific value. In fact, frequencies are so specific, predictable, and scientifically replicatable that they were able to be measured back in the 1600s, before the invention of the technological devices that we use to measure them today. The first measurement of musical frequency was made by the French physicist Joseph Sauveur in the 1690s by counting the beats produced by two very low notes played on a pipe organ. Beats occur within the brain when it perceives two proximal frequency values simultaneously. Sauveur listened to the organs F-sharp and G played together in the second octave below middle C. We can reproduce the beating that he heard by playing these two frequencies now. The throbbing you'll hear is the wave interference. Sauveur counted six of these beats per second. He also knew that the interval between these two notes was a semitone, with the ratio of 16 to 15. In the harmonic series, that's the ratio of C to B, middle C at 256 Hz to B at 240, scaled down to the ratio of harmonic 16 to harmonic 15. Sauveur so then multiplied the 16 from the ratio by the 6 beats to get a frequency value of 96 for G. He then multiplied 15 by 6 beats to get a frequency value of 90 for F sharp. I want to make a video footnote here and point out that although 96 Hz is the harmonic value for G, 90 Hz is not the harmonic value of F sharp which is 88 hertz. So this F sharp is not a note, it's a mean. But I'm not surprised that this 1690s pipe organ had F sharp tuned to 90 hertz, which enters the series at harmonic 45, because this is the value for F sharp, according to musical historian Richard Dumbrell, that has been used as far back as Sumerian and Babylonian tuning with the exception of the ancient Greeks. In the harmonic chromatic scale, F-sharp at harmonic 22 sits right next to the phantom note harmonic 23, moving it more than a semitone away from G. Ancient ears likely heard a need to adjust F-sharp into that phantom, expanded interval, tuning it up slightly to harmonic 22.5, or its scaled up octave, harmonic 45. Anyway, by multiplying the beats by each number in an interval's ratio, Sauveur was able to calculate all the frequencies of the musical scale. And although we think of our ancestors as backward, uneducated, and lacking sophisticated technology, they could determine frequency simply by thinking it through that we must rely on the crutch of technological machines would cause them to consider us to be the generation lacking sophistication. In 1713, Sauveur proposed that all music be standardized around the C4 frequency of 256 cycles per second. This is the harmonic value of C, which begins the harmonic series at 1 Hz and scales up through its octaves to a middle C value of 256 Hz. When Sauveur calculated the frequencies of the musical scale using beats and ratios, most of those frequencies corresponded to harmonic values, as we can see in his own work. In his Acoustic Principles of Music, published in 1701, 
he charted the G major scale, denoting A at 27, which scales up to 432. Several pages later, he listed the C major scale, with A again at 27, or 432. However, most musicians were already using equal temperament tuning in 1713, so even when using harmonic C at 256 Hz, the A was tempered down to 430.54 Hz. And it's here the conspiracy comes into play. Equal temperament, as a form of tuning, was hinted at as far back as ancient Greece, but it wasn't perfected until about 1580, when Galileo's father, Vincenzo Galilei, settled on a mathematical ratio, 18 to 17, that allowed for a rudimentary form of equal temperament. But Vincenzo's son Galileo had a friend named Marin Mersenne, who was able to perfect Vincenzo's tuning work. According to Wikipedia, Mersenne developed a ratio that was more accurate than Vincenzo Galilei's 18 to 17, and could be constructed using straight edge and compass. The square and compass are Masonic symbols, and I've long argued that Masonic teachings are sonic in nature, based on the musical mason of the ancient Greek tetrachord. The note of G, the central feature of the Masonic logo, represents the mise or mason of the harmonic C scale a position that was usurped by F-sharp when equal temperament altered the musical scale. It's obviously not talked about very much, but we do see hints, like the F-sharp and G played repeatedly in Eyes Wide Shut during the secret society scene, which is very near to the Mies of the film. The obvious question is, why would anyone bother implementing a conspiracy regarding music? Most people view music as harmless, whether it's tuned properly or improperly, though some people believe, myself included, that frequencies and beats can be used to alter human consciousness and even behavior. But there's a much larger reason behind this musical conspiracy and it involves the overlap of music theory with monetary theory. Our current debt-based monetary system is the greatest act of conspiracy ever devised, and it was designed using temperament, the act of mistuning musical values. Prior to equal temperament tuning, music generally used harmonic frequencies, and Sauveur's proposal for standardization in 1713 was an attempt to return to a harmonic value for C in a time when equal temperament had already taken music over. The fact that he saw the importance of using the harmonic value for C can lead us to recover the importance of harmonic values for tuning in general and reinstituting the harmonic value for A as well. Joseph Sauveur wasn't the only musical researcher to recommend tuning middle C at its harmonic value. Others included the father of cymatics, Ernst Schladny. 
composer John Pike Hula, mathematician John Herschel, and in this letter, composer Giuseppe Verde is agreeing with a suggestion to tune A down to 864, an octave of 432. Royal astronomer George Biddle Airy, who designated the fourth prime meridian at Greenwich, listed the known values of C in his 1871 book on sound and atmospheric vibrations. And harmonic 512, the octave above 256, was the only frequency listed with a reason for its designation on grounds of theoretical convenience as admitting of continued having. Airy worked with all the harmonic values in his book, but because he believed the E-flat key signature was more widely used than that of C, he shifted the harmonic values so that D9 and all of its octave values were applied instead to E-flat. This placed the note of C at the harmonic value of B at 240. As a result of this, the harmonic value of 256 or an octave higher at 512, is now C-sharp and not listed in this scale. But we see the harmonic 432 value now applied to B-flat instead of A. But musicians weren't the only ones using the harmonic value of C in their work. When determining the size of quartz crystals used in watches, the crystals are cleaved to attain a vibration of 32,768 Hz. This value happens to be the 15th octave of harmonic C. When scaled down 7 octaves, its value is 256, another example of what the A440 camp believes is an arbitrary measurement of time. Also, sampling rates often use 256 Hz, or harmonic C. The random access memory in computers uses harmonic values of C at 128, 256, and 512 GB. In 8-bit color, the maximum number of colors that can be displayed at a given time is 256 and both 8 and 256 are harmonic values of C. Dr. J. Holder designed a chiropractic adjustment instrument called the integrator that fires at a frequency of 64 Hz, as explained in a study by Drs. McClyman, McClyman, and Crotey. This is another octave of harmonic C. And there are many, many more examples. In fact, there are so many ways we choose to express and utilize harmonic scale frequency values that it's puzzling, almost suspicious, that the one area we don't use harmonic frequencies is in our music. I'm grateful for any feedback. Please leave your thoughts in the comments, and thank you for watching.